Good morning and welcome to Sunday Special. Today we'll talk about the Psalm of Peace. Peace, the very word which is so relevant all over the ages by humankind. We want peace of mind, we want peace around you, we want global peace. And this Psalm written by the fifth Guru Arjun is so relevant to the life that its recitation has become almost ritualistic and many people, instead of a khand part, which carries on for 48 hours, just recite this. They call it Sukhmani Sahab part. And the beauty is that this piece is not meant to be read as it is. It's in the Raag Gauri. It has to be recited in that manner, but then the people read it and okay, they, they can imbibe the values described in this psalm, that's really welcome. It's a lengthy composition written by Guru Arjan Dei. It takes 35 pages from page 262 to 296 of Guru Granth. And this has become a majority of the Sikhs who are firm believers, a daily regimen of Nitne. The physical side where the Guru composed this composition was once enclosed by a dense wood. The location is still marked on the bank of Ramsarpur near Golden Temple of Rassar and it's said that when Guru Arjun Dev was engaged in composing this Bani, the elder son of Guru Nanak, Baba Shri Chand, came to meet him. By that time Guru Arjun Dev had completed 16 Ashtapadis, which are ten toes. And he requested that Guru continue with the composition of Sukhmani Sahib. Baba Shirichal, out of humility, recited the first slok of Guru Nanak, Mool Mantra, Aad Sat, Jugaad Sat, Habi Sat, Osibi Sat. There was truth in the beginning, there's a truth in the end, there's a truth today and there will be everlasting truth. And then, as a mark of respect, Guru Arjun Dev started the next sloka at the head of the 17th Aspadi with this shloka. Now, translated the word Sukhmani is rendered in English as consoler of mind and I call it the Psalm of Peace not just a consoler. It's a great deification, it's a great homage and it is basically a jewel of peace. Sukh literally means peace and money is mind or heart but then it also means jewel. There's a proverbial jewel in musk deer, that's money. Its smell is overpowering. So the couplet, Sukmani Suk Amrat Prabh Nain, Bhagat Jan Ke Man Bisen, Raho, Sukmani Pure and Simple, Ambrosial Nectar are in God's name. The devotee's mind must bliss, abide in bliss and calm. And then there's Raho, pause. And this is one word which brings peace. Think of one thing, pause, reflect, think. So the emphasis is on pausing and thinking. And that's what the psychologists say all the time. Are they learning something from Sukhmani Sab? Now structurally, it's a composition of 24 Ashpadi. And each of them begins with the shloka and is followed by eight paudis, which are stanzas of so 24 cantos, each with a prologue called shlok, followed by eight stanzas. Each stanza or paudi has ten lines and each consists of five couplets. There is the unity of the stream. Perfection of man, mentally, morally, and spiritual, that's a purity. 
the shloka in the beginning of Ijaspadi is basically the summary, the gist of the eight stanzas that follow this shloka. And one of the fundamental texts of Sikh faith, the Sukhmani presents a complete scheme of the teaching of the Sikh faith. Each Aspadi has a fresh vision to impart. And that vision is about a particular aspect of truth. So the whole text may be regarded as a relationship, a basic theme, as divine, immaculate, compassion, abundance, grace, God's help, merit of devotion, and so on. If you analyze it, it is a theological statement of major tenets of Sikhism expressed in devotional form. The language used is close to Khadiboli. There is a Hindi that evolved in the region, in the northwest of Delhi. It is not a Punjab, pure Punjabi, let's be very clear. But there is a distinct inclination towards Punjabi language. And this is the beauty of all Gurmani that there is, they are not confined to one language. There is Brad Basha, there is Khari Boli, there is even Urdu, there is a part of Persian, and so on. So, the variant of the Hindi with Punjabi has been used there. And let's be very clear to indicate the difference of the language of Sukhmani from Brad Basha to Khari Boli. For example, in Pauri 3, Thiai is Punjabi, so is Ditha, Dekhna, Khate, they are pure Punjabi. But then, in Nikki Kiti, Nikki is small in pure Punjabi. Braj equivalent is Vehi, and that's also used. Bhau, instead of Bhai, that has been used. So this is a curious synthesis of languages and thereby enriching Punjabi language as well, those words were incorporated. That then may have stopped, but then that is extremely important. Now, Bhai Gurdas wrote Gurbani as Guru Arjun Dev narrated it. It was written by Bhai Gurdas, dictated by Guru Arjun Dev. And as I said, there are 24 Rashtapadis, followed by and couplets. And one of the fundamental thing is that it presents a complete thing. Now what is the significance? The significance is that it describes the ultimate Sikh values and those values are the search for eternal truth without going away from your normal everyday existence. This is another thing. There is a curious assemblage of prayer, request and definition. People are defined. And then there is a advisory. For example, Sant ki ninda kare so hatyara, the person who despises or backbites an honest person is a murderer. That's against the hate speech. And this is a masterpiece of Guru Arjan Dev. Now the beginning of the composition opens, as I said, with the Shabbat, which is the source of blitz, the word, Ad Gurme, Jugad Gurme, Sat Gurme, Shri Gurdev Name. And this is right at the beginning. So Guru Arjan Dev made a departure from the prevalent Hindu tradition, which prefers refers to the personal God. There is no reference to the personal God. It refers to Guru Shri and to Nam Simran, the word. The word is important. And that's what was institutionalized by Guru Gobind Singh when he made Guru Granth the eleventh and the last Guru. Now, as I was saying, the structure we are aware, and what is much more important is that the word Sukhmani represents the yogic term Sukhmana, 
Now, Sukhmana is a mythical vein which is situated between Ira and Pingula and they join together. As a matter of fact, this is a transposition from the yogic terms to the normal mundane understanding. So from that confusing pleotra of pranam and asana, it comes to the spirituality. So interpretation is basically the composition as relevant to the basic unity of mankind and that is derived from the unity of truth ad gur ad sach juga sach habi sach nanak osibi sach and the philosophical structure of the non dual reality is both manifest and unmanifest now this is a reaction against the existential socio political situation which was prevalent at that time it was a period of trinity and hypocrisy and this was a call for peace harmony love now the contents that is the most important in the first three aspadis the guru mentions the advantages of repeating the name of guru naam simra so the first is just advisory that if you recite the name these shall be the advantages which shall accrue to you in cantos 4 to 11 guru arjan dev expresses his thoughts on the god man who is a son a saint so this is a description of that person it's again not a prayer but as i said it's educational Cantos twelve to twenty are very important. They mention the process by which God's grace can be won. That is by self surrender and resignation to the will of God. God is truth, and what is most more important is remembrance, simran of God. Simran is repetition. Think of the the word. The main emphasis is on sound and the word, and that's a man. Now, the last four cantos, the guru elucidates the name, covers both the personal and absolute nature of God. The Lord is present in His creation. You cannot separate God from the creation. So, if you love God, you love the creation, and that's a real humanistic approach. no where has god been identified as a part not as a creator only but as a creation itself even a mad person even a person who is abusing you is representing god god is present in everything and in absolute form god is not subject to matter is not subject to time or space God transcends, unifies all, and represents all, and all represent God. The theme of Sukhmani, we can say that the major is one, and others are subordinate. The major theme is there in the first and the second panel. Sukhmani, Sukh, Amrit, Prabnam, Bhagat Jina ke kare bisra. That peace can only be obtained by. the recitation of the divine this recitation and shows our contact with god and then it serves as a channel a channel for the outflow of the god's virtues into ourselves so we are remembering the god and in return it flows back to us with all the qualities and attributes of godhood so second is a treasure the treasure is the word the noun if reality is one unity then the truth and humanity must manifest their respective unities and all such unities are viewed within one unity of the god so sukhmani 
states that there is a dynamic nature of non-dual being, which is manifest and unmanifest, both. It forms the form, it assures the form, it marks the beginning of different jugas. Whenever it's manifest, it is an expression to the divine law, and the divine law is expressed through the Shabbat and Sadguru. In the second Ashwati, as I said, the ultimate reality pervades every person, every creature, every element, and that is realized through God. In the real spirit of the term, eighth Ashwati, sorry, eighth Shopai of the third Ashwati, Guru pinpoint the Hari name is superior to the other names of God. The four Ashwatis of Guru Arjan Dev concentrate on the conception of the world. And let's be clear that here Guru Arjan Dev, like other religions, represents the human situation which has been accepted by the Sikh Gurus. And the Ashtapadi, opening Shiloka say, that individual is without any qualities, like a child who is born, but then by nurture, by upbringing, he grows up having certain qualities. Though it is advisable for a human being to remember the Creator who is always with him, and it helps a person achieve salvation, moksha. And the work nature is important, worldly nature. This is possibly work is worship. And when you are working, you are worshipping God by doing honest work and also remembering. So when you are working, you also keep on repeating the name. And that's why you might have seen people, six always saying Vaiguru, Satnam, Sri Vaiguru all the time. Guru Arjan Dev brings back the idea of grace and mercy, the only inspiration. And for this purpose, Sukhmani says complete self-surrender. And that self-surrender would help you understand. Now, I love Ashtra Aspadi personally because it describes the ideal man. As I said, the whole Sukhmani is a combination of explanation, advisory, defining and everything. So it's understanding Sukhmani which is more important and translating it into your life is more important than just recitation. Guru Arjandev calls the ideal man Brahmjani and he's a perfect person who completely identifies himself with the ultimate primal source. That's in 8th Ashpadi. In 9th and 10th Ashpadi, comparison with other sects is given in which the real realization of the word would not be possible. The different saints, devotees belonging to different faiths, could have partial vision of truth, but they did not experience the ultimate reality, so they beg for His grace to get strength. But God is there in all, dual and non-dual, pervades everywhere, and there's an understanding. And the most important, as I said earlier, is what was said, truth, truth is God, God is truth. In Ashwati 16th, as I described, the transcendental nature of reality is expressed. And that transcendental nature of beauty, na reality is beyond form of contrary colors and as three strands of reality. And at this time, I like to make it clear that Guru Arjan Dev believed in transcendentalism. But he reconciled the unmanifest and the manifest reality. So that's where the duality and the non-duality is expressed. Last four Ashpadis, as I said earlier, 
they talk of the word the manifest attributes are real the real is both nirgun and sargun nirgun is without any attribute sargun is having all the attributes so they help man human consciousness surti to develop in a multiplicity duja bhav word to so the central theme as i said repeatedly is a simran naam simran remembering god so that you achieve the status of an idol man who is described having sargun and nirgun aspects of the god himself and sukmani when you are reading it if you follow it up if you inculcate those attributes of life then you would understand that this is the most transcendental piece of spiritual literature which redeems a man and exalts him to the status of a god himself because god pervades everything but for that the mean is the word the recitation of the word which communicates a channel to the god and that to be traffic makes you a god head a god man brahm gyani and once you are a brahm gyani then peace of mind transcends over you and over your social structure thank you